Let's work on the Keep Calm Carry a Wand block from the Pumpkins and Potions Ladder Quilt. It's time to work on the Keep Calm Carry a Wand block on page 21. I have the background fabric and batting, and out of the embellishment kit, I have pulled the black glitter vinyl. Let's get started. Before I start the first block, I wanted to mention a few things that I do. I have a pigtail cord attached to the side of my machine. I have my USB that has all of my files. And I will plug this into the pigtail instead of taking this in and out of my machine. That way there is less wear and tear on the port on my machine. I put all of my thread that I plan to use for the quilt in a little carrier and I will just sit it off to the side so I have all the threads ready to go. If you've watched my other videos on Kimberbell, you know that I use muslin as my stabilizer and I would just cut a big long strip and not cut to the size of my hoop. I would leave the strip just hanging off the end and that would save on the stabilizer or the muslin. And I would just move the block up to save on stabilizer. I am going to do the same thing with this quilt. I am going to be using no show mesh. You can see I have the whole roll. It's still attached. So I am just going to drop this roll to the floor get a little bit of slack so that it doesn't cause any issues when the embroidery is going on and then i'll be able to show you how i will save on stabilizer let's get started this first block uses the glitter vinyl there is a plastic covering on the top and that has to be removed you just peel it off save this you will use this to put over the applique when you go to press this with the iron. For this very first block, I am going to add both the background quilting and the embroidery design from my USB that is plugged into my machine. Normally, I use embroidery software and I combine my files and then add them to my USB so that when I pull my file up, it's already combined and ready to go. I find software a time saver because I can sit at my laptop and combine the files and do many at once and not have to be sitting in front of my machine. However, that's totally optional. And this whole quilt, of course, can be done with just the designs taken straight from the USB. I will select embroidery and then my USB. I am going to choose the quilting bundle and for this first block, I need the Halloween 8 design. I will choose block by block. And I need the 6 by 8 size. I will select that and hit set. Now I will go to add back to the USB and open the embroidery files folder. And I will scroll and find the Keep Calm block. It's hard to see, but there it is. I will add that and hit Set. Now, the last hoop I used was too small. So I am using my 7 by 12 hoop. So I will go up to the settings and change my hoop size. I do not have a 7x12 on my machine, so I will choose the 8x12 size. When I set my designs and get ready to embroider, I will move it all the way to the left to make up for that inch difference in my hoop size. And I will hit OK and select embroidery. Now once I've selected embroidery, this becomes one design and they won't move apart. So I am going to go to layout and move. I could just do it with my finger, but I can get more precise with the arrows. I am going to move it all the way to the left again to compensate for my hoop being a little bit smaller. And then I am going to push the design all the way to the top. And that is because on my stabilizer, 
if I have a little bit of room down here that I haven't used and it's still attached to the whole roll, that is just less that I waste. And I will move it up and I will show you that at, at the end, but that's how I save on stabilizer also. Then I will hit OK. I am going to choose this plus minus needle that will give me all the steps. It'll show what I'm stitching. And if I need to skip a step or go back for some reason, I'm right there ready to go. Let's stitch this out. I ran the first step, which is the placement of the batting. Now, traditionally, your batting would be cut a little bit larger than this rectangle. And you would lay it down, run the tack down of the batting, and then trim along all four sides so that your batting then becomes the size of the square. I cut my batting to exactly this size and so I will place it down and it will fit right within this rectangle. So if I were to run the tack down there really wouldn't be anything for it to tack down because it's exactly the same size. So the next step is that tack down of the batting. I am going to skip it. So I will hit this down arrow. And then this is the placement for the fabric. Well, the fabric is only about a quarter of an inch outside of the batting line. And if you look at the fabric, Kimberbell, you can see how big that is. And that placement for the fabric is just not needed. It's the fabric is so much larger that as long as you can get generally over the center of the batting and have equal amounts, if possible, around the batting, you'll be fine. So I'm also going to skip that step. I will hit the down arrow. Now this is the tack down of the fabric. And of course we do need that. done stitching out the block and I just wanted to show you that if I would have cut my stabilizer to size I would have wasted about eight inches and so that adds up over time so what I will do I will pop this out of the hoop I will move it up I still have the roll attached I will have it, here's the end of the hoop. I will have it a little bit hanging over, so that's even less. When the next one starts, it'll just be a few inches. So you can see right there. So there you can see we've wasted as little as possible, and I'll just keep doing that. After I stitch the next block out, I will cut that one. I will just leave one block on so I'm able to save. And that's how I'll do it. I'm cutting this block from the strip of stabilizer. It's still attached to the roll and we'll cut it to size. 
This block needs to be cut to six and a half by eight and a half. I use the Kimber Bell's orange pop rulers. And although you don't need them, if you're going to be working on Kimber Bell projects, these are definitely worth the money. I'm going to remove the basting stitches around this block and then flip it over and cut the stabilizer right next to the batting line. This helps keep the seams less bulky and there won't be any excess stabilizer in the seam allowance. After I've cut the excess stabilizer out of the seams, I like to cut the blocks from the back most of the time because I can easily see the quarter inch seam allowance and I can make sure that it's even around the entire block. If you aren't using the orange pop rulers, you can use just a regular ruler and cut with the basting stitch still in the block. However, sometimes after quilting, the block does pull in a little bit. So you do need to measure the final size of the block and not just cut on the basting line. If I was using a regular ruler, I would cut two sides, a top and a side. And then before I cut on the other basting stitches, I would measure my block to make sure that it measured exactly the finished size. That way, if the basting stitches are not exactly even, your block will still end up being the correct size.